What's the good word, y'all? DKB here. Uh, seems like the lucky coin wins again. Perfect 10 out of 10. Uh, and that ultimately means that the New York Jets lost this week to the Patriots uh, in really a heartbreaking fashion. I don't want to say it's one of our worst victories ever. It's just more so kind of the, the way it occurred. So uh, for those that didn't catch, the main highlight would be we had maybe, I want to say there was six seconds left in the game it could have been like 36 or something like that but uh basically under a minute left um the new york jets hold the new england patriots offense off uh per usual very back and forth game multiple punts uh very um very insignificant offenses on both sides for the most part um but final seconds of the game we punt it doesn't go out of bounds um i forget the guy's name now but uh joan marcus jones there we go um he ends up returning a punt i want to say 78 yards uh for a touchdown very up in the air if there were some missed illegal block in the back calls uh irregardless though they almost they essentially walk off with a touchdown to win 10-3, and uh, you're talking about a, a New York Jets defense that only allowed the offense to score three points the entirety of the game. There's multiple bad field positions uh, for the New York Jets, um, both offensively and defensively. Um, a few big plays on the, the end of um, uh, uh, Mac Jones. And uh, uh, some timely runs by Damian Harris, a couple big plays there. Ramondre Stevenson uh, getting back in in the receiving side of things. But for all intents and purposes, with how often our offense was going three and out and uh, the, the plays that could have been turnovers and lack of running, uh, et cetera, you have to be extremely excited about this New York Jets defense moving forward. But this is the first time where it's come back to bite us because – Instead of Zach Wilson's lack of turnovers not leading to a win, we're talking about the fact that we actually needed to rely on him again, and he couldn't get the job done. And so you can't ask for much more other than shutting out the offense as a whole to give us a chance to win. And uh, th this is the problem with the whole formula that Rex Ryan wanted to rely on, that uh, Robert Sala is essentially trying to revamp because, let's face it, uh, Zach Wilson has more weapons around him that are youthful, that can build with him, et cetera, than uh, Mark Sanchez ever really had the chance, um, essentially leading the way for an entirely veteran team. Um, and you just have to walk away extremely disappointed. And for me, it was some of the, the post-game press conference comments that really struck a chord with me. So there was multiple reports from one Defensive players, you know, taking their helmets off, tossing things down as we get the punt return touchdown um, that the Patriots score on us to end the game. Um, you had Sauce Gardner saying they were expecting overtime. The defense was going to put the team on his back, really try to help secure a dub in overtime. That gets snatched away from them. And then more so specifically, Zach Wilson, um, you know, there was a specific question that came his way that if the... If he feels like it was either, I don't remember if it was Zach Wilson or the team, the way the question got posed, but basically, does he feel like he's a factor in uh, holding this team back? He said no. It looked like the media team came in and shut things down instantly after that and uh, got him out of there. Definitely seemed like a rush job, but uh, reportedly, um, what he was doing post game really rubbed people the wrong way. Uh, it was said that. He was walking around the locker room as if he wasn't the main problem, the main culprit of this whole performance. And then you had Garrett Wilson, and I'll probably save that for another video, absolutely blasting everything about the offense. So if you want the highlights there, um, it, it's pretty abysmal. 103 yards of total offense. We literally had two yards of offense in the second half. 30 minutes of play two yards net total uh, in terms of production. Um, absolutely crazy. Six first downs the entire game. 
Um, and you have to beg the question, what well, what's happening with Zach Wilson at this point? Uh, Robert Sala's already committed to him for the remainder of the season. Um, you have to be flexible as a coach, though, so maybe they pull the plug on him. Um, but, I mean, we, we had the Denzel Mims and the Garrett Wilson um, uh let's just call it minor arguments or bickering that came up after some errant throws and some miscues, uh, which you would have to expect at this point based on the, the, the history of the season so far is uh, Zach Wilson's fault. So it, it stings. We get swept by the Patriots in both of these games. You would have to say that Zach Wilson was the main cause of us not winning. The first go around, we had the three turnovers, two of them. Uh, I, inexplicable you you have no idea what the the thought process was there um and then in this game literally couldn't do anything to to help the defense or the special teams out whatsoever um outside of one huge play as well keep in mind Denzel Mims had to come back on an underthrown ball um at least they say it got caught up in some of the wind gusts but underthrown ball which that went for 34 yards so you're really talking 50 60 yards uh reasonably being completed between the running backs and zach wilson and i don't want to put all the blame on him the running game couldn't get anything going um i kind of expected as much once we found out nate herbick wasn't good to go um and we had to rely on dan feeney on the right side but still this is this is what robert sala has uh talked uh talked about to the you know this is ultimately what this game was supposed to be for for Zach Wilson. If he played within the confines of the offense, we should have walked away with the dub. That didn't get done, and that was on the back of a lot of inaccurate throws, which has been a very common theme for him, um, which is not what we drafted. It, everybody had the expectation that he had crazy tools, but he was supposed to be one of the more accurate quarterbacks coming out of this draft, and, and we've seen anything but. And keep in mind, we're talking about guys that – um, he's not Josh Allen. He's not throwing a Cole Beasley and, and Jeremy Curley and players like that. He has a Denzel Mims. He has a Corey Davis. He has Tyler Conklin and CJ. And I'm just literally talking from a high perspective, large catch radiuses. Um, and, and he's not getting it done. So we'll see what happens. But uh, this was all it was all summed up perfectly to me by Robert Solid during his press conference. We rarely hear any kind of expletives from the man in uh when he was questioned about how the offense performed in the second half, he pretty much called it dog shit, uh, word for word. And uh, I think at this point we all agree. So we'll see what uh, we'll see what the plan is from here. But you know, everybody came to kind of gave the default answer. We'll go back to the tape. See what we need to clean up. It's going to be very minimal things on the defensive side, um, even from a special teams perspective with them allowing the game winner. Uh, but ultimately in this game, it, that offensive room really needs to pull together and uh, figure some things out. And I want to respect Robert Sala's uh, comments made earlier about sticking with Zach Wilson throughout the entire season to see what they have. Um but it's hard to see the performance that we got just now and realizing that that's probably the floor. A lot of quarterbacks in the league don't, you know, provide these kind of performances that we're seeing from Zach Wilson. I mean, David Mills looks like he'd be a huge upgrade over Zach Wilson at this point, And that is extremely uh, uh, disappointing to have to come to the realization of. So, um yeah, I, you know, my faith is always going to be in this coaching staff to try to pull things forward. But I just talked about this as well uh, when I was chatting it up with New York Jets Situation Report, uh, Gunny and uh, Gino from Everything NYJ. And it, the offensive coaching staff is going to have way more struggles than the defensive side because we're talking about a lot of coaches that are literally still heading into their second year coaching and we're talking about brand new to the position no previous experience uh miles austin in the wide receiver room um uh uh mike lafleur in terms of uh being a coordinator um and it's a huge upgrade because he's been working with wide receivers he's been an assistant and a passing game specialist so you'd expect that there'd be better luck at least in the passing game and that explains a lot more of these uh pass heavy um scenarios that we found ourselves in even when we weren't playing from behind so often 
but we we absolutely have to figure something out. It's, it's looking pretty bad for Rob Calabrese right now, who's the the quarterback coach. Uh, Zach Wilson's confidence looks shot. I mean, this is this you know second third week in a row uh, where he's been well second week coming off the the Bills win anyways. Um, he's been pretty defensive after the game, and uh, we had to give him TLC his first season and bringing in his quarterback's coach um, just to get him to finish the season on a high note. Eh, I don't know. We'll see where we go from here. But either way, let, let me know what your guys' thoughts are. I uh, wish I had a better silver lining uh, outside of the defense being phenomenal. But uh, curious what your guys' thoughts are. How quick do we need to pull the plug on this Zach Wilson um, experiment, I guess you could call it at this point. And I'll catch you guys again. Peace.